Are you dusting with an old dust rag? Are you just spreading the dust around? Do you feel that your old dust rag makes things dustier than they were before? Has dusting become a real chore? Well, not anymore. With the Jada and Stitches dust mitt, you are two easy steps away from a cleaner house. Step one, put on the mitt. Step two, dust. It's that easy. Now you're all ready to clean those hard to reach areas. But that's not all. With the Jada and Stitches dust mitt, you can also use it to open a door, open the fridge, turn on the tap, turn on the light, write a shopping list, sort through your yarn, pick things up, put things down, shake someone's hand. You can even use it as a drying rack. Grab your hook and yarn and make one right now. But wait, don't just make one. Make two, make three, make four. Make one for your friend. Make one for your mom. Make one for your spouse. Make one for the kids. Make one for the cat. Make one for your uncle. Make one for your aunt. Make one for your boss. Make one for your boss's boss. The Jada and Stitches dust mitt makes a great gift. You'll love it. Dusting is boring. Dusting will still be boring. Dusting is absolutely necessary and absolutely boring. This product will make dusting easier, but it will still be boring. These make useful gifts. You will want to make these for everyone. Everyone may not be as enthusiastic about dusting as you are. Jaden Stitches will not be held responsible for boring conversations about dusting. Jaden Stitches does not know how to dust. Jaden's husband does all the dusting. He's very annoyed about that. Mom and Stitches requested this dust mitt. She thinks dusting is boring too. Hey everybody, welcome to the Jaden and Stitches show. All kidding aside, we are going to make this really handy little dust mitt today. It actually is pretty handy <laughs> and it really works. It's also a great project to use up some of that super soft, fluffy polyester novelty yarn you might have lying around. It works really well. And I'll talk more about the different kinds of yarn you can use in the materials section. So without further ado, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up a soft, fluffy, rather useful dust mitt together. In order to make our dusting mitt, we are going to use around 150 grams, between 150 and 175 yards, of a polyester novelty yarn. So I've got three different yarns here I wanted to show you today. This is a sort of a terry cloth style of yarn. It's very soft and fluffy, has a nice deep pile so it would be able to grab the dust. So that's a great choice if you have some of that. I've got a velvet style yarn here, also polyester, also soft and fluffy with a nice dense pile. It will grab the dust as well. Plus the stitches are nice and wide so it will expose more of the yarn which will grab more dust. And today I'm going to demonstrate using a chenille or a blanket style yarn. Also soft and fluffy, nice dense pile, great for picking up dust. So whichever one you want to use is perfectly fine. Uh, but you want to make sure it's polyester because you can toss a polyester dusting mitt into the washing machine in a cool bath and you can dry it uh, in the dryer on low heat. So once you finish dusting, you can obviously clean it up really easy and reuse it. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and I'm using an 8 millimeter hook today, also known as an L or an 11 in the US, a size 0 in the UK. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please hit that button and the bell so you never miss another episode. And once you've chosen your yarn and you've got your tools, we can get started. Please visit our shop and purchase a pattern. It helps support our show. And we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. We're going to begin with a slip knot. So regardless of what polyester novelty yarn you're using, you want to start the same way. And what we want to do is make a foundation row that is a little bit wider than the width of our hand so that we can pull the glove on and it's not too loose and it's not too tight. So using this sort of size 6 bulky weight yarn, I'm going to chain 12. If you're using a slightly skinnier yarn, you may want to cho chain a few more than that or depending on the size of your hand, sort of chain a foundation length accordingly and I'll show you what it should look like in a second here. So once you've changed your foundation row, I've got 12 here. I don't want to stretch it. I just want to lay my hand over it. So it sticks out a couple chains, two or three on either side. I also know that it's going to stretch a little bit. So 12 is definitely enough for me. I don't even need to add any turning chains to that. But if you put your hand down over top of your foundation chain row and it's just like you're only one chain off on either side, add a couple more. You don't want it to be too tight or snug when you're dusting. So that's 12 chains for me. I'm going to use the half double crochet stitch and because we're using a novelty yarn, it is a little more difficult to see your stitches. So you've got to just sort of feel your way along. We're going to sort of skip the first chain from the hook. 
I'm going to half double crochet into the second chain from the hook and in each chain back. So I will have 11 stitches at the end of my row. You will have exactly one sort of count less. So if you had 12 chains to begin with, you'll have 11 stitches. If you had 14 chains to begin with, you'll have 13 stitches. So whatever your foundation chain row count was, you'll have one less for your stitch count at the end of your first row. I've got 11 stitches. You can sort of see them. Another reason I like variegated yarn is because typically each stitch is a different color so they stand out a little bit better. At the end of every row you're going to chain one and turn and now you're going to half double crochet back and forth remembering to chain one and turn at the end of every row and remember that the last the last stitch in your row will be sort of pulled down the edge a little bit so if it's difficult to see your stitches it might help to count as you go I know that I need 11 stitches in each row so if I count 11 I know I've built 11 you want to be able to keep an even stitch count then you want to make a piece of fabric that is a nice rectangle that covers your entire hand so from about the bottom of your palm all the way up to the tip of your tallest finger. So depending on what yarn you're using, what hook you're using, and how large your hand is, that will determine how many rows you need to do. So there's no specific row count here. You just want to take your time, half double crochet, back and forth, remembering to chain one and turn at the end of every row. Keep an even stitch count. It doesn't have to be, you know, if you find you have to cheat one in or cheat one out, that's fine. You just want to try and maintain a piece of fabric that's roughly rectangular and large enough that your hand fits inside it. I have crocheted 11 rows of half double crochet. So each row is 11 stitches wide and it's 11 rows tall. It just sort of worked out that way. It, Definitely fits my hand, so my hand fits comfortably on that. There's the top of my finger, there's the bottom of my palm, right about here, about the edge. So that's all I want to do for side one. I'm going to fasten off, and I'm going to make the second side exactly the same way. So I'm going to chain 12 to start. So I begin exactly the same way, chain 12, half double crochet into the second chain from the hook and then I make a second piece exactly the same so 11 rows tall. If you have trouble counting your rows don't fret once you have a piece that's exactly the size you need it to be fasten off and then just start a second piece and keep measuring it up against the first piece so if you have trouble counting your rows don't worry you just need to make a second piece that is pretty much as exact as the same, exact the size as you can make it. So don't worry about it being absolutely perfect. This is a dusting mitt after all. <laughs> and it's going to work even if it's a bit wonky. Once you have two pieces that are identical, so either you were able to count your rows and your stitches or you just eyeballed it, you want to not trim your yarn. So we're not cutting our yarn. We're just going to lay one side over top of the other and we're going to single crochet all the way around three sides of it. So all the way up this side, across the top and down the other side. And we're going to work through both pieces together and this is how we're going to turn it into a mitt. We're also going to create a nice little corner up on either side so that you've got a little sort of edge to kind of get into those little nooks and crannies that are harder to grab. And all you're going to do is, if you feel it easier to sort of pin the whole thing together, fine. Otherwise, just sort of stop every once in a while. Try to keep your edges as even as possible. You can chain one before you get started, just to give yourself a little bit of space. Pair up your edges. I'm going to work over top of my little tails. And then you're just going to stick your hook through loops on the edge of both pieces and this does not have to be neat or tidy. You do not have to have the exact same number of stitches running up one side as the other. You are just trying to connect them. So everywhere sort of along the edge you feel there should be a stitch. Whatever feels naturally a good sort of space from the last one. You just naturally stick your hook in anywhere anywhere it works. Make sure you get both sides. You want to make sure you're getting both sides because we are sort of turning this into a squarish sort of mitten. 
pause every once in a while, make sure that your two sides still line up, and just slowly work your way up the first side. I'll catch up with you at the corner here. All right, I have single crocheted both sides together, running up the one side. I'm now up to the top, the first little corner, and these are the first chains that we made when we started our foundation row. So there's my two little ends. I'm going to actually just work over top of those. So I'm going to stick my hook in through both of those chains that were sort of the first ones. And I'm going to work two single crochet into that space. So two single crochet in that corner, making sure I get through both sides. And that is just going to give me the barest of corners to sort of turn the edge. Then I'm just going to do the same thing, make sure that I'm holding my two pieces together. And I'm just going to work through evenly both sides. So both sides. There should be even sets of stitches all the way across. You'll have sort of 11 or however many of your sort of stitches were in each row all the way across. But like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just try to keep it as even as possible. This is a dusting mitt. <laughs> So just work your way across, making sure that you get both edges together. That's the most important part because we are making a seam. And I'll catch up with you at the other corner. When you get across to the other corner, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to make sure you're getting both sides. You're just going to work two single crochet into that same corner space just to give yourself a little turning corner. And then you're going to do the same thing down this side. You're going to hold your pieces together. You're going to make sure you're getting a piece of a loop or a stitch from one side and then the other because the most important thing here is making sure that you have an even seam that runs along the entire outside edge of your mitt so that you don't have any gaping holes. You don't want this happening. And it doesn't matter how many stitches you need to make that happen. It doesn't matter if your edges are puckering. It doesn't matter if it looks wonky because this is a dusting mitt. What you want is to make sure that when you put it on, your hand is hidden and there's no big holes or gaps in your seam. So go ahead, work your way down the other side. We're almost done. Once you've worked your seam all the way around your mitt, you can sort of pull up on that loop and try it on. Now, if at this point you felt like you wanted it to be a little bit longer, you could just continue to work a single crochet or a half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around your mitt. So treat it now like you're working in the round if you want to add a few more rows to the bottom. I like that length. It comes down just below where my hand leaves and it's sort of wide enough for me that I can sort of stick my fingers into the corner and I can get little corners uh, with those mitt, that part of the mitt there. So it's not too huge and unwieldy um, and I can definitely do some good dusting with that. So you can go ahead and add an extra row if you want. If it's already the perfect size for your hand, then you can just snip your yarn, fasten off, grab your yarn needle, make sure you've got a yarn needle with an eye large enough that your yarn will fit through it, and then just pull your yarn to the inside of your mitt, and you can just weave that tail back and forth underneath some of those stitches, back and forth, and if a little bit of the tail is left hanging out, don't worry. If you had to piece together bits of your yarn to make this mitt, don't worry. Those little tails will just help dust. <laughs> this is a dusting mitt. So you can use up whatever scraps you've got. If you've got a whole bunch of different kinds of polyester novelty yarns, why not sort of string them all together and make dusting mitts out of them? Not only will they be kind of cute, but they'll still be super useful. And there you go, a super simple, soft and fluffy, very useful dust mitt. This is great uh, for getting into all those little hard to reach areas, the slats between your blinds, you know those areas. Um, and that extra seam we put across the top helps you keep your fingers from poking through the fabric so you can get into those little harder to reach areas. I hope you enjoyed making that along with us and we will see you soon here on the Jade and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, stay dust free, <laughs> and we will see you soon. Bye everybody! Hi everyone, this is Mom and Stitches. Thank you for watching. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and you can also click the like button and the bell. Thank you, have a wonderful day.